Our next presenter is Karthik Kanan. And Karthik, are you ready to go? Yes, I am. The floor is yours. Thank you. And I also there need my clicker. Thank you. Hi, uh, my name is Karthik Kadan. I'm from the School of Management. Uh, this is a joint effort, as you can see, with very many people. Uh, this is a very diverse group of people, and I will talk about how they fit into the project very well. Uh, Yang Chen, who's one of the advisors on this project, he roped me in to be the lead, uh, primarily because I know the least about quantum computing. Okay. <laughs> Uh, so with that said, we are, what we are trying to do is trying to set the stage for what uh, the future uh, modeling and business aspects of it are as it relates to quantum computing. I want to emphasize two different streams that I want to talk about here because they are particularly relevant as to how we can think about quantum as it applies to business and economics. The one stream relates to modeling, so if you think about how can we use the mathematics behind quantum theory and make it relevant and make it applicable to businesses and decision making? And I'll expand on that in just a second. Uh, the other one, which is the first one up on the, on the slide, is about how do you take uh, the quantum computing the methods and how can we use them to solve real world problems? So these are the two areas we, are, we envision our value add to be. To give you a little bit more of value, uh, there is a stream called quantum cognition. Okay? And the idea behind the stream is that when we model, when we are using uh, you know, probabilistic models, the traditional probabilistic models to model behavior, it turns out that we can't explain all the behaviors very well. And what we do is we then call them as irrational behavior. Okay? And what, on the other hand, what uh, increasingly people have been able to show is that when you use the quantum um, probabilistic models, I should say, right? I'm not even sure if I'm using the technical term correctly here. When you use those term, when you use those probabilistic models, quantum probabilistic models, you're able to show better predictions. So there is a stream of work uh, actually run out of one of the faculty members is a, a professor in IU. They are emphasizing significantly on the quantum cognition and there is a stream that goes on. Similarly, in the quantum modeling um, stream, if, you st if I'm still there, um, this person by the name of Martin Schubick, he's a very famous economist uh, out of Yale, and what he has shown is, again, using quantum models to show or to predict stock prices in the stock market. Right? So there is an extensive work, increasingly important work, um, in using quantum modeling for behaviors. Where is it apl applicable? Uh, the EVPRP president, uh, uh, Teresa Mayer, was talking about how we think about information security and defense and all of that. When you truly look at this in information security, we don't know why sometimes people behave that way. There are very well-known behavioral, bi behavioral biases and other things that comes to kick in, and we're not able to explain those phenomena well. Our hope is that we position ourselves well enough to take the lead in terms of using quantum theories to model behaviors and, um, and, and try to achieve uh, the outcomes. Now, similarly, what this is the first stream I want to briefly talk about. Uh, we today are working with a large company. The company will remain nameless uh, because of the NDAs and things like that. This company is dealing with tens, of, uh, tens and millions of people, and they are trying to fix their engineering team is trying to fix which aspect of the app do I need to fix so that I can use the app or I can increase the app usage. And they have all sorts of measurements about these apps. 200 such variables, imagine millions of records that they have about individual consumers over you know, every instant that the consumer uses. That's a large enough data set. And they're coming and asking us, can you develop um, a causal model which shows which of these levers in my should my engineering team pull in order to improve the app usage? Well, it's a very complex problem, and we are trying to solve this by sampling a fewer amount of data's, data from this entire data set to make the decision. Right? Our hope is that we could use the quantum computing capabilities to solve many of those um, complex problems. We know that it's not there yet. We know that uh, quantum computing in some regards has not been um, practically shown to exist that, to solve these problems. 
But this is where opportunities lie, and this is where we would like to set um, the seed in terms of being envisioned as the leader uh, in the quantum informatics for business and economics. Uh, the goals and the timelines are consistent with this. That's not as relevant to what we're going to be talking about, because what we have defined goals are to uh, push both of the streams, uh, the, both the streams that I marked in the, on the left side, a little by little uh, over a two-year period. But what's important is the amount of attention this domain has been receiving, and this is part of what the next uh, slide is going to talk about. Uh, recently, in December 2018, I believe, uh, they signed a National Quantum Initiative Act where uh, about a billion dollars uh, has been allocated to push the forefront in the quantum uh, computing field by, by the, you know, uh, using a bipartisan support the Congress has pushed for. NSF is charged, among other organizations, NSF is charged with uh, enabling these quantum uh, initiative act as well. Now, you are also seeing quantum computing capabilities increase, and it's continuously following the exponential curve we've come to see with typical quantum compu uh, typical uh, computers. I have a minute more, so I'm going to pass through a little faster here. And the last point I want to emphasize is, it's not just that researchers are looking at this problem. Companies like Intel, Microsoft, and Google, these uh, processors, processing and technology companies are big leaders in this. Not just that, right? We're talking about companies like Ford, Volkswagen, Boeing. All these guys are investing in quantum computing and trying to understand its applications of it. So we are uniquely positioned at Purdue to take advantage of all this. We have connections with many of the companies I just mentioned, including Ford, um, uh, Boeing, and Northrop Grumman, and all of them. Right? Uh, we are also having one of the very well-established uh, Purdue Quantum Science and Engineering Institute here. When we talk to people like the College of Science Deans, they talk about how much we have advanced in the quantum space. And so this is, in some regards, timely. And it's also plays into our strength. We want to be thought of as the forefront uh, leader in terms of quantum modeling and behaviors. Uh, since uh, this is uh, this last slide, I'm going to she's going to show me the zero second stop. So I'm going to pass it right after this. You can see that there is a diverse set of people. Some in the traditional space. Some in uh, the little bit more complex and data analysis, Sabrikas and Andy Jang. We have domain expertise as well. Uh, in defense and other areas also. So this is, uh, this. I'll conclude with this picture of all these people. We have a track record with regard to leadership um, and uh, various different things and interdisciplinary research as well, right? So, thank you. Any questions for Karthik? They know that I know le le very little. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, thank you, Karthik.